What's your uh, ridiculous question? What's your P doom? Probability that human civilization destroys itself. Well, look, I, I don't have a. <laughs> <laughs> it's a you know i don't have a p doom number the reason i don't is because i think it would imply a level of precision that is not there so like i don't know how people are getting their p doom numbers i think it's a kind of a, a little bit of a ridiculous notion because um what i would say is it's definitely non zero and it's probably non negligible so that in itself is pretty sobering and my my view is it's just hugely uncertain right? Mm -hmm. What these technologies are going to be able to do, how fast are they going to take off, how controllable are they going to be? Some things may turn out to be, and hopefully, like way easier than we thought, right? Um, but it may be there are some really hard um, uh, uh, problems that are harder than we guess today. And I think uh, we don't know that for sure. And so in un under those conditions of a lot of uncertainty, but huge stakes both ways, you know, on the one hand, we, we could solve all diseases, energy problems, the, not, the, 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 the scarcity problem, and then travel to the stars and consciousness of the stars and maximum human flourishing. On the other hand, is this sort of P-doom scenarios. So given the uncertainty around it and the importance of it, it's clear to me the only rational, sensible approach is to proceed with cautious optimism. So we want the outcome. We want the um, uh, the benefits, of course, uh, and uh, all of the the amazing things that AI can bring. And actually, I would be really worried for humanity if I, if given the other challenges that we have, climate, disease, you know, aging, uh, resources, all of that. If I didn't know something like AI was coming down the line, right? How would we solve all those other problems? I think it's hard. Um, so I think we've, you know, it could be amazingly transformative for good. Um, but on the other hand, you know, there are these risks that we know are there, but we can't quite quantify. So the the best thing to do is to use the scientific method to do more research to try and uh, more precisely define those risks and, of course, address them. Um, and I think that's what we're doing. I think there probably needs to be uh, 10 times more effort of that than there is now as we're getting closer and closer to the to the, to the the AGI line. What would be the source of worry for you more? Would it be human caused or AI, AGI caused? Yeah. Like humans abusing that technology versus AGI itself through mechanism that you've spoken about, which is fascinating, deception or this kind of stuff. Yes. Getting better and better and better secretly and then escapes. I think they're, they're, they operate over different timescales and they're equally important to address. So there's just the... The, the, the common garden of variety of like, you know, bad actors using new technology, uh, in this case, general purpose technology and repurposing it for harmful ends. And that's a huge uh, risk. And I think that has a lot of complications because generally, you know, I'm in huge favor of open science and open source. And in fact, we did it with all our science projects like AlphaFold and all of those things uh, for the benefit of, of, of the scientific community. Um, but how does one restrict bad actors access to these powerful systems, whether they're individuals or even rogue states, uh, and but enable access at the same time to good actors to to maximally build on top of. It's a pretty tricky problem that there's I've not heard a clear solution to. So there's the bad actor use case problem. And then there's obviously, uh, as the systems become more agentic and, and closer to AGI um, uh, and more autonomous, how do we ensure the guardrails and they stick to what we want them to do uh, and under our control? Yeah, I tend to, maybe on my mind is limited, worry more about the humans, the bad actors. Mm. And there it could be, uh, in part, how do you not put destructive technology in the hands of bad actors? But in another part, from again, geopolitical technology perspective, how do you reduce the number of bad actors in the world? That's that's also an interesting human problem. Yeah, it's a hard problem. I mean, look, we, we, we can um, maybe also use the technology itself to help um, uh, uh, early warning on some of the bad yeah. actor use cases, right? Whether that's bio or nuclear or whatever it is, like AI could be potentially helpful there as long as the AI that you're using is itself reliable, right? So it's a sort of interlocking problem and that's what makes it very tricky. And and again, it may require some agreement internationally, at least between China and the, U and, and the US of, of, of some uh, basic standards, right?